This is a malware that can easily be detected by standard tools. Using a rootkit, an attacker can hide this malicious file to avoid detection. In this video, we will understand how rootkits are able to hide files inside the local disk. By definition, a rootkit is a malicious software that gives attacker privilege access to a system. One of the main goals of a rootkit is to conceal other malwares and to perform operations without being detected. To understand it, we will try a simple Linux kernel module rootkit in GitHub. Credit to the owners, and I post the link in the description below. I already cloned this on my machine and installed the required packages from the README file. This is written in C and I made some adjustments to make this work on my system. But don't worry, we will not deep dive on the code itself since it is not the goal of this video. To compile it, we just need to run make command. After running it, we will see a little bit of output. This is a type of Linux kernel module rootkit, so it created the following file. That is a kernel module and we can install it on a live system to activate it. Before doing that, let's confirm first if we see the malware inside this directory. To install the module, we will use insmod command followed by the module name. After installing, we should no longer see any file containing malware on its name. If we remove the module, the system is back to normal and we now see the malware again. Now that you see how it works, you might ask yourself a question. How does the rootkit do that? The first thing we need to understand is what happens whenever we run ls command. In Linux, there are two protection boundaries. They are called the user and kernel space. LS is a user space application that expects an output. In our case, we run LS without any argument, so we expect a list of files and directories to appear. When we run LS, it will call libc, which is a shared library used in Linux systems. You can think of libc as a wrapper to low-level functions. The specific function it is calling whenever we run ls command is get dent 64. That function reads raw directory entries from a directory file descriptor. Since it is still in user space, it needs to reach the kernel space. It needs to do that because the kernel is the only one who can talk directly to disk devices, use file system drivers, page cache, and buffer cache. To do that, it performs a low-level assembly code, a small stub, to connect to something inside the kernel space. That is the kernel handler. This is also called the syscall dispatcher, which calls the kernel space functions. This is also the point where the switch from user mode to kernel mode happens. After that, the syscall handler will now call the target function needed, which is the sysc at dent64. This is the one that talks to the file system driver and walks the directories. Notice also the difference between the name of the user space and kernel space functions. They are very similar, but the kernel space function is prepended with sys. This is a common pattern. Once the sysc at dent64 is done performing its duties, it will copy the results back to the user space. In this normal flow without any rootkit, we will see the malware included in the output. Now let's see what is happening under the hood when we installed our rootkit that hide a malicious file. The flow is similar to the previous section. ls command still calls get dent64 through libc, but there are a few differences. When the syscall handler is about to call the sysc at dent64, it will be intercepted by a function called fhf trace thump. It uses ftrace, a built-in kernel function that records or intercepts function entries and exits. The main purpose of this is for debugging purposes, but attackers can abuse this like what is happening right now. It is designed to redirect the function call to a hook function, which is the hook says get dent 64, which acts as a malicious controller inside the kernel space. The first step it will do is to call the original says get dent 64 function. It will let it do most of the job of talking to the file system drivers and walking the directory. It will then store the results in a buffer and pass it to another function called evil. This evil function is the one that will perform the manipulation by removing the files with specific pattern in the names. Once the evil function is done performing its task, the hook will send it back to the user space. At this point, the malware no longer appear inside the output. As we learned in this video, one of Rootkit's main goals are to avoid detection or hide other malwares. It can do that by installing a kernel module that will manipulate and redirect the execution of normal kernel functions. Once the malicious kernel functions are performed, it will return back the filtered output to the user application. This is just one feature of a Linux rootkit, and there are more such as installing backdoors, hiding processes, and disabling security features. If you want me to cover more about rootkits, please do like this video. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.